First things first, the Canadian Grand Prix is not at risk, despite serious forest fires in the region. Fires have hit the news over the past couple weeks as plumes of smoke have crossed the border, and you may have seen some quite haunting images of New York over the internet. The smoke has actually reached as far west as Chicago and as far south as Washington. The wildfires have been blazing for coming on six weeks now, and it spans across the border in Quebec and Ottawa. Despite Montreal being in Quebec, you need to appreciate that Quebec, well, it's the size of a country. So currently, the risk remains low for a race cancellation, and air quality is still really good in Montreal. At the end of the day, safety comes first. But thankfully, it seems as though the situation is under control, at least for the Montreal area. But I hope everyone stays safe and the situation continues to improve, because lots of people are at risk. Fernando Alonso will certainly be hoping the race goes ahead, because he's claimed that he and Aston Martin will crush Mercedes at Canada. And while it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek, there was also an air of confidence to it. In fact, after Spain, he said it was the last time they would be that far off the podium. And with upgrades they are planning on bringing, they truly believe they can challenge Mercedes, and perhaps Red Bull. But that seems a little bit too far away considering where they currently are. Aston Martin have already brought a few smaller upgrades in recent races, but Canada and Silverstone is where they're expecting to bring their first big upgrades. And after their showing in Spain, you would say they probably need them, as they've lost a step on Mercedes, especially since the start of the season. Both Mercedes and Ferrari have both brought big upgrades, and in Mercedes' case, it does seem to have taken them further towards the front. Ferrari obviously still struggling a little bit. But if the Spanish Grand Prix performance continues, Aston Martin would potentially be behind Mercedes. Fernando has said the team need to be pushing upgrades if they want to compete with the top teams. And team principal Mike Crack also agreed that Alonso should be pushing the team. He went on to confirm that they are bringing an upgrade to Canada that is considered to be a step forward. Crack also doesn't think that the order is as obvious as it appeared in Spain, insisting that while the Aston struggled on the softer tyre earlier on, they stabilised later in the race on the harder compound and that that level may not continue to future races, regardless of any upgrades. We do have to remember that Alonso's race was compromised by his qualifying, which in turn was hindered by a damaged floor after a small off in Q1. Aston, and especially Alonso, believed that if his floor wasn't damaged in qualifying, they would have qualified in and amongst the Mercedes, or at least near Hamilton, and Alonso believes they could have beaten them in the race. I don't necessarily agree with that, as their early race pace on the soft, I think, was enough to cost them that opportunity, but Alonso ended up right behind Stroll at the end of the race, and he started much further behind him. If he started further up, who knows what he could have achieved. You never write off Fernando Alonso. Mercedes aren't going to sit still, though. We know that they're going to bring small upgrades to most of the races going forward, and we know that over the years they're particularly good at keeping a good rate of upgrades. But we're in a cost cap era, and they have already brought a substantial upgrade package with supposedly big improvements coming at later races as well. There has to be a trade-off somewhere. One other thing to consider is wind tunnel time. Aston Martin have more available to them because of their constructor's position from last year. Red Bull, of course, have the least, and that was before you take into consideration their penalty for exceeding the cost cap. We also have to remember that Aston Martin have a long-term plan. They weren't even really expecting to be as high up as they are this year. Their goal for competing at the front was next year, so they're already ahead of the curve. What we've already seen is that if you put Fernando in a competitive car, or even a half-competitive car, he will get the most out of it. You only have to look at his performance this year compared to his teammate Stroll to see just how much of a difference a driver can make. We don't know exactly what Aston Martin are bringing to Canada. Could be a new rear wing, could be a new diffuser, it could be any number of those things. But ultimately, they believe it's going to be a step forward. Canada could be really interesting. I fully expect Red Bull to be clear of everyone as always, but Ferrari, Mercedes and Aston Martin could all be in the mix for best of the rest. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you live anywhere near the forest fires in Canada, stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.